devil. We know the devil has come to uh, rob, kill, steal, and destroy our, if, uh, from our lives. But today, I'm going to share. I'm going to share about uh, uh, with what, uh, what the Lord showed me. I believe the Holy Spirit showed me, and it's all to do with soul ties. We can't we can't be released because we're always in this thing and it's pulling us down, and 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 and, and our lives are miserable, and, and we can't uh, we fall, and we can't seem to be getting up from what God has got in in our lives, what God wants to do in our lives. We keep on going through the same old, same old story all the time. So the message this morning is soul ties. And I'm going to open up with Corinthians 6.16. You, sorry, I'm so sorry. It's 1 Corinthians 6.16. 1 Corinthians 6.16. Do you not know that he who... Unite himself or uh, himself or herself with a prostitute is one with her in body. For it is said, two will become one flesh. Now I'm going to I'm, I'm going to read it again. Do you not know that he who unites him or herself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. And now in Hebrews 4, 12, it says, yeah, for the word of God is living and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It yes, penetrates amen. even the dividing of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. Amen. Amen. The word speaks about when souls are knit together, becoming one flesh, spirit, soul, Amen. and body. And there is an attachment. So, as we go along life, there's always something trying to attach itself to us, and that's soul ties. You know, when... There is fornication going on in, in the lives of the people who live like the world live. I, I'm talking about Christians now. When there is fornication going on in the lives of people who uh, that live like the world live, their souls are tied together in the spiritual realm. You are locked in. There is a transfer of evil spirits from one person to the other, and whoever you have fornicated with, or whoever they have fornicated with, become one with them, and they inherit all the bad and ugly things in the other person's life, and all in their life is one with them, so you have all the attachments, and they have yours. So whatever, whatever, Relationships, I'm speaking about myself as well. Whatever relationships you've had in your life, uh, whatever you, however you fornicated, how many partners you've had, or whatever, it can be a number of things. But every uh, bit of fornication that you have been doing and that I've been doing, it's, a for, it's formed soul ties to our spirits. And... The Word of God says that we shouldn't fornicate. We should not have sex before marriage. We should keep our lives pure and holy. That's what the Word of God says. Because if you step out of the Word of God and you go and do your thing all the time, you are gaining. Every single time you're going to sleep with somebody, you are gaining more and more evil spirits in your soul. And that's why people's lives are so messed up today. And you know what? There's more messed up people in the church than there are in the world. And it's because we don't listen and we don't, we don't listen to God's word and we don't, uh, we don't obey God's word. You know, God's got His word out there for us to keep us protected against all these forms of evil. Amen. 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 Soul task 
can be transferred in people's lives for decades. And it's true, when you think about all the people that have uh, come and gone in your life, there's been many, many soul ties if you've been fornicating all this time. It, and it just weighs you down, it pulls you down. All this evil stuff has come into your lives. And, and you, even though you're walking, you're trying to walk the walk and talk the talk, you're not getting anywhere. You're just being pulled down all the time. And it's because these soul ties have got hold of you and they're destroying your life. And that's why I feel that God asked me or God told me that I have to share this with the people. Because, you know, some people, they come to church year after year, day after day, week after week, and they're worse off now than they were ever in their lives. And it's because all the soul ties and nobody's ever told them and shared with them or, or dealt with it or broken those soul ties. And we're always living in this thing over and over, this vicious cycle or circle. For many that are so, still soul tied, they are messed up so much. And that is the same things over and over. They are never freed until they break and denounce the ties that they have been, uh, that they have, uh, that they can have a new lease in life. Amen. These soul ties go with you from one relationship to the other. And on the way, they are, they are, open, they are open to gaining more and more soul ties and transferring of wicked, wicked spirits from one to the other. Now, and it's, it's, it's all to do with spirituality, it's all to do with how we live our lives. And if we're living the lives as the world lives, that's what's going to attach itself to us. And we're going to, in the, in the long run, we're going to be ill, we're going to be uh, depressed, and we're going to be oppressed, we're going to be angry, we're going to be addicted, we're going to uh, fornicate more, we're going to live the uh, world's life, and we're going to wonder why. Do we never get, come right? It's because the soul ties that we've got ourselves attached and tied to has got us in bondage and we don't know how to break loose. But this morning, today, we are going to break those soul ties over every person's life and we're going to walk out here free for once and for all. And when we come to church, we're going to come to church excited and on fire. And we're not going to come and drag all that stuff that's putting us down anymore. It's over and done with in the name of Jesus. We are going to be new people in the Lord. We're not going to carry the old lives that we have anymore. God doesn't want that for us. He wants us to be free yes. from all sorts of addictions. Amen. Free from fornication. Yes. Free from pornography. Free from drinking. Free from anger. Free from depression. Free from fear. God doesn't want that in our lives anymore. It's a thing of the past. This morning we are going to break those soul ties in every one of our areas in the name of Jesus. Yes, and Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus, is going to do it in this place this morning. So in future, when we come to church, we're going to be on fire and excited and yes, our lives are going to change. We're not coming all draggled and bit, uh, messed up anymore. It's over and done with. God has given you a new lease in life. Is, and we're going to take that new lease in Jesus' name. We are not busted, broke, busted, and disgusted. Right. We are healthy, wealthy, That's and prosperous. Right. And God wants us to live That's like that. Name. Not like, oh, we all finished and we all got no... Um, we're always miserable. We're always dragging the past behind us. We're always dragging the things that people have said about us and pulled us down. All the lies and the deceit and that, we all drag it with us and we walk in the streets and we are as miserable as sin because uh, the devil has lied to us. The devil has told us all sorts of things. We've been living a dark, dark life and God does not want us to live like that anymore. We've got to open up now and finish and plow with the old life, the old dark life. God doesn't want that for any of us in this place. And our lives are going to change yes. in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. We're not living the old lives anymore. It's Amen. over and done with. God doesn't want that for us anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm speaking about those who fornicate. You know, it brings sickness and disease. It brings depression. Fear, anxiety, addictions into your life. And I believe that's how the demons enter. 
because there is an open channel without realizing it. You think life might be nice and uh, rosy and dozy and what have you. You might think you um, enjoying life, but in the meantime, you are chained to the devil's things. You are chained and you're being pulled down and further and further and you're going deep down into a dark dungeon. And God doesn't want that for any of us in, the, in our lives. He wants us to be free. He wants us to have pure, keep our lives pure and holy. Amen. He doesn't want smut and filth that Amen. the devil throws at us, right. that we walk around stinking full of poo. God doesn't want that for us. He wants us pure and holy. He wants us to have pure hearts before yes, Him and before the people. But you know, some of us are walking around with all the sin that we are. We, we're supposed to be washing the blood of Jesus, which we are, but we're not taking advantage of God's word by these stripes we are healed we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus we are forgiven we are pushing the blood of Jesus aside and we are doing our own thing and we are going to the deep dark dungeons of poo because that's what the devil puts on you he puts a stink on you yes. and you walk around with that all your yes. life the stink that, that people when they see you they don't see the light they see this bedraggled person full of the devil's stuff on them. No, we are supposed to be Christians washed in the blood of Jesus, free from sickness and bondage and disease. Yes, the devil will come and mess with every single one of us. He will, he will come and try and pull us down. But we've got the word of God in, yes, in our Lord. hearts and in our mouths and by the stripes of Jesus. We are healed. Amen. We are made whole. We are de de delivered in Jesus' name. Jesus, we must stop going round like the world all finished with, yeah. with the things, carrying all this heaviness. We don't need that in our lives. We need to be free. We yes. need to be holy. Mm -hmm. The people, when, they, when we go out in the street, people can see there's a difference. We are living with the Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit shine out of us. But instead, yeah, we've got this ugly thing popping out and this ugly thing popping out and then we're going to, into the world and we're doing the things of the world where we should be looking at God's word and keeping ourselves holy and blameless before God. And you know if we don't continue with God's word and having a relationship with God and, and we're going to be messed up more than we've ever yeah. been messed up, we must take God's word literally and Amen. use it in our lives Amen. but stop dragging the stink of the world round with you all the time yes, that's not what God wants you to do yes. he wants you to be free and he wants you yes. to be holy Amen. he wants you to be a shining light Amen. in the darkness he, that's what he wants for each and every single one of us and yet we go around worse than the world because we sinning like the world we're doing the things of the world and God does not want that for any of us and over and over and over the same old same old story we've been pulled down more and more and more and more with the stink of the the world and God doesn't want that he wants us free and today we're going to break free from all that bondage all those chains and those wicked spirits that attach itself to us we breaking free this morning, yes. not another minute Amen. or hour that Amen. will go past that we have not broken free and Amen. had as the soul task broken in our lives for once and for all, that we can get up from this place and move on to our destinies, what the God wants for every single one of yes. us. Amen. Amen. And then we've got no more excuse to yes. go out there and take a soul, or I'm talking about Daha and all the stuff that's going on in, in, the, in the world's life and this thing and that thing and do this and do that of the world. We've got no more excuse because now we've learned what the Word of God says to us Amen. that we can go free and we can have the joy of the Lord oh, in our goodness, strength yes. and not carry all this guilt oh, and the smut and the shame yes, and yes. the unforgiveness and the addictions yes. and, the, and, and the, the pulling us down all the time. We don't need that in our lives anymore. It's a thing passed over yes, and yes. done with in the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. One Peter 1 Peter 1.16 says, Be holy as I am holy. 
There are other cell tiles transferred through music, which can attach itself to your soul. This can be in any form, but mostly heavy metal. You know, the thing is, there's a lot of things that can pull us down from uh, the, the, the spiritual, from the soul task. And sometimes you don't even realize, believe it or not, if you have been fornicating in your life and the person has passed on, you're still tied to that person, you realize it. Your soul is still tied to that person. So therefore, we've got to break free from all these soul tasks. We have to. Uh, whether that person has passed on or not, you've got to release them. Because you'll be carrying that person, all the demons from that person, you'll be carrying them around in your soul all the time. You'll be chained and attached to those things, and you don't want that. So you've got to think about what's happened in the past. You've got to release it to God. Release it and cut it off your life, because you don't need other rubbish demon st stuff uh, uh, attached to your life anymore and interfering with your life because that's how the devil does it. He brings stuff into your life to um, mess with you all the time. And we're not going to allow that in the name of Jesus. It's a thing of the past. You know, not only is it the music that we listen to that gets deep down into our souls and we tie we tie ourselves, our souls, to the deep, heavy metal music. And there's some music that I really like, but it's definitely not heavy metal. I'm sorry. But I do like music. And you know, the more, you know, I, I love music, really. But that's, the devil's uh, playground is music. The, the evil stuff to get right, right down here. But there's some good music you can listen to. There's good uh, jazz music and there's, Buddha music, and there's all these other musics you can enjoy, but some of the stuff that we listen to, it gets right down here, and then we soul tied to that, we wonder why we've got anger, we've got murder in our hearts, we want, we want to do this, and we want to smash this one, and we want to smash that one up, because a soul ties to something that you've acquired into your spirit. So today we're going to break free of all those things. The other thing is, in relationships, and, and now it's not only one relationships, now we're talking about a multitude of relationships that you've gone through years and years, you've had this boyfriend, you've had that girlfriend, you've had this husband, you've had that husband, and you've had all these partners and what have you in your life, and to each and every single one of them, I love you, I'll never leave you, I promise you, I adore you, I'll never get anybody like you, I'll never find anybody like you, you are my soulmate, you are my this and you are my that, and you've, now you've poured out your heart to them, and the relationship is broken, finished and clapped, broken. And then along the way, you never can settle down, because it's all the soul ties that you've formed with people that you've promised your soul to. You've actually sold your soul to them because of things that you've promised. And God says, be careful when you open your mouth what you promise to people or what you vow to people. You can't vow to people and break your vows. You can vow before the Lord, but you can't break that vow. Once you've vowed before God, you can't break any vow. But to people, we've done that. Perhaps we've done it. We've got to not vow to anything. We cannot open our mouth and promise people things and lie on top of it. We can't do that. We then, we are attached to them. We've joined to them and we've never uh, come out with the promise that we've promised them because now that promise is broken. But the tie is still there. It's a spiritual thing, all, all to do with spirituality. You see... There's another soul tie, and please people, this is, for, this is for married people in your, whatever you do in your marriage, if it's pure and holy before the Lord, there's nothing wrong with 
a kiss or a French kiss when you are married. But when you are unmarried and you are busy putting your tongue down somebody's throat, it's a soul tie, full stop. There's no if, ands, or but in betweens, nothing. It's a soul tie. You've made a soul tie with that person. You cannot do that. You've got to keep yourself holy before the Lord. Even when you are going out with somebody now, keep yourself holy. Don't touch them. Don't do anything to them other than perhaps hold their hand. But don't go with the, the tongue business and all that stuff. It's soul ties and promising them things. It's soul ties when you know you can't come up with the promise. That's right. Keep your relationship relationships pure and holy before yes, God. Lord. Then the relationship will work. And don't just go out looking for Tom, Dick and Harry or Sue, Jane and Mary. Don't just go and do that. God has got the specific person for you yes. people. Amen. Don't go looking. God has got the person for you. And when he brings that person to you, you in your heart are immediately going to know this is a person. And you've got to treat that relationship with respect, with dignity, with, um, with um, being honest and have integrity in, in, in that relationship. Don't mess things up and, and become uh, get soul tired before anything's ever happened. Don't do that. Keep it pure. God says, don't fornicate, and it's a big thing. Why does he say that? Because he doesn't want us messed up anymore. In Jesus' name. So, when your boyfriend and your, uh, your girlfriend comes that God has given you, keep it pure and holy. And keep the talk pure and holy as yes, well. Yes. Don't talk smutty things to your partner and things like that. God wants you to be a whole, have a wholesome mouth. Speak beautiful things, and even things from the Word of God you yes, can speak. Amen. amen. And you can nurture that relationship amen. as long as it comes from God. Amen. God will bless it. You see, the woman with five husbands, and the sixth one wasn't hers. Now imagine the soul ties she had. She had soul ties with every one of them. But when Jesus said, now the, the, sixth one, the, the one that you have now is not your husband. She was so bound up with every single one of those men. She couldn't get them out of her mind because she was so tied up. But when Jesus came and he saw yes, her, he saw her, he saw into her soul, he saw into her heart and that, he felt so much love and compassion. Yes, and he said, amen. this one you have now is not your husband. And he felt for her. Yes. And there and then she was freed from the bondage that she had. And, and, and God healed the relationship. God healed the heart, the brokenness. Because she was again looking for love in all the wrong places. And, and bringing more and more spiritual ties into her body. And that's what some of us do in the world, uh, and in the, the, the Christian. Some of us do that. We go looking for stuff in the world there. And we know it's not from God, but we still go and attach ourselves to things like that pulling us down deeper and deeper. Then we wonder, where's the depression? Where's the addiction? Where's the, the, the anger, the anxiety, the fear? Where's it all come from? It's coming from all these soul ties that you've been tied to in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But God this morning is going to help every single one of us here. We're going to be freed in this place. And like I said, we're going to go out here feeling on fire. We're going to feel really joyous and light when we go out of this place amen, today. Amen, because amen. today, I've, uh, uh, before, I've been thinking, Lord, the people come in here, they go out, there's no change. They come with blank faces, they go out with blank faces. What is it, Lord? Why are we showing them, Lord? Why can't we move on with our lives? And That's this right. today is going to help every single one of us. Yes. We're going to go out here feeling different. On, because yes. sometimes you ask somebody, didn't you feel the Holy Spirit? I felt nothing. Because perhaps you are bound with things, soul ties or something. But today we're going to feel different. We're going to get on fire for the Lord. God's going to open up new doors for us and we're going to get excited about our future. God's got the best for us. He wants to, you know what God does? He tries to protect us. Well, He does by His Word. 
He protects us. But here we are moving out. No, I don't need your hand. I don't need yeah. your protection. I don't need that. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. And my way leads me to hell. My way leads me to the ash heap. My way leads me to the drug dens and the, the, the bars and the prostitute homes. That's where my, home le uh, my way leads me, if I'm doing it my way. Mm. But God wants us to do it His way, mm. and His way is to live a pure and holy life. That's right. And then we can, you know what? When you have this built up this beautiful relationship with the Lord, not one of us are perfect, by the way. But you know when you've got this relationship with God, you can take a second breath and you can feel so good and you can feel so much peace in your heart because you, you've got this beautiful attachment. Mm. The Lord, the Holy Spirit is attached to you. Mm. And you can feel so free going outside and doing things. You, there's no attachments pulling you. But if there's something that's gotten hold of you, all these spiritual tasks, nice. and it's pulling you, and weighing you down, and making you miserable as sin. That's not a, not a nice way to live. Nobody wants to live like that, and Jesus certainly didn't expect us to want to live like that, because when, he's, when He sets us free, we are free by His Word, and by the blood of Jesus, we are really set free. But we have to live in the freedom. We have to repent from our past we can't continue with our past all the time because our past can even take us to hell and we're not going to go to hell. We are going to heaven, every single one of us. But we have to walk the walk. We have to live by the word of God. We can't live one foot here and one foot in the world or one foot uh, in, in heaven or, or, and one foot on the banana skin. You certainly are going to slip and you're going to slip hard. So God wants us from this moment on to go forward with His Word and with the Holy Spirit in our hearts and that He will lead and guide us. And we're not going to do anything of the world anymore. It's a thing of the past. It's over and done with. The devil's been lying to us good and solid all this time. We've led miserable lives because of the, the thing He comes in front of. He puts like a tray of fruit, nice, looking like nice fruit here. Apples, that's drugs. A bottle, yeah, or a bottle of Coke with a, a drink in it or whatever. Or something, it comes and fills it so nice. Ooh, take this, that will make you feel cool. And then you say, gee, but it looks so nice, like even the apple when she took it. When you start taking things like that from what the devil is giving you, it's going to lead you down to a destructive way. And we don't want that. We want to rise up and be healed and walk forth. In the word of God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, Samuel, the, the good task, this good soul task are in Samuel 18, 1. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Amen. Good soul ties are normally come through a covenant relationship. You know, you can have a soul tie with your with your sister, or you can have a soul tie with your parents or or your friends. As long as it's a nice, decent tie, like a pray for one another, encouraging each other, and and when somebody else is uh, feeling down or whatever, lift them up with a word of encouragement. Pray for them. That's becoming good soul ties. That's having a good relationship with each other. Uh, instead of having the, the soul ties that are really pulling us down and taking us to hell. The other one that was a very bad thing, and it wasn't, it wasn't this girl's fault. In Genesis 34, 1-3, Dinah was violated by Shechem. He was physically, emotionally, and spiritually attached to her because he violated her. Now, that's what a soul tie does. When you, when you get involved with fornication, you're actually locked into that person's spirit in Jesus' name. And that's what this evil Shechem did. He violated Dinah, who was unwilling to partake. She didn't want nothing to do with this, this thing. And he took her and he raped her and he tried to destroy her life. And she had to stand up from that place and clean herself off and get into the presence of God because she was already so, so tired with this person that violated her. 
Fornication brings a false sense of security. But many times, the woman or man can be hurt or rejected. Both will receive all the soulish ties from one uh, that the one took advantage. Now, when you have soul ties with somebody else or fornication with one to another, that your, your soul ties interlock. All those demons get transferred from one to the other all the time. So it doesn't matter how many partners or whatever, male, female, whatever you've had, it, it's in your spirit and it can destroy you if you don't know what's going on. But today is the day that God uh, allowed me to open up this, to, to share it with you, so that today it will be a thing of the past. No more soul ties. And if you go out from this place and you go and attach yourself to something again, we've pre preached all we can, we've shared all we can, and it's between you and God. And what's going to happen to you after that? Because now we wash our hands off the fact that we've taught the things and that God wants you to receive this morning and go out here with new uh, vitality in your life, new exuberance, new, uh, a new heart, an excited heart, knowing that now I've got the protection of the Lord on me, everything is broken around me, and I can go free this morning, over and done with, no more stuff in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. The devil has right, he has the right to interfere and mess with you because of fornication, which opened the doors. So if you've, if you've allowed that to happen to you, even after you become born again, and you've been clean for one or two or three or ten or fifteen years, and you're going to open yourself up to fornication, or it'll be worse then than it was before, because you knew the truth, but you still continued over and over and over, and you, it's pulled you way, way down, and now you can wonder why am I not free all the time. It's because you overstepped. God cleaned you up, and then you went over and done with And by the way, the blood of Jesus cleanses, the blood of Jesus forgives us. Amen. We're always forgiven and set free. Yes. But our duty and our, uh, our part is to repent from everything that we've done yes. in our lives. Yes. We have to keep our side of the story. When God has given us His Word, He's washed us in the blood of Jesus, He's forgiven us, and we have to take full responsibility for our lives now in Jesus' name. Because the Word of God is true, and it's a lamp unto our feet. And the Word of God will set us free. But we must hang on to the Word of God and not let uh, the devil lie to us in Jesus' name. God is strong in His Word about being pure before marriage. And that's even for my grandchildren. We have to keep ourselves pure before marriage. And urges us not to engage in fornication and sexual sin. You know what? It can kill you. It can destroy yes. your life. Yes. That's why God is so strong on His Word to keep pure. Keep pure. Keep your thoughts pure. Keep your lives pure from touching somebody that is That's unclean. Mm -hmm. And even in a, in, in a Christian uh, relationship, keep yourself clean and pure before you are well, before you are married in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. But the good news is that if you repent and renounce these tasks, the blood of Jesus will purify you. Oh, I just thank God. Amen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be united with his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's the only time when two can become one flesh is when you're married. Not before. But only when you're married can you become one flesh with your partner, your wife or your husband. We want to ask you today, if there are any soul ties in your life, and you ask the Holy Spirit to help you with this, do you have any relationship problems in your life? You know, the same thing over and over. I can't settle down. Why am I always feeling miserable? Why am I not certain in a relationship? Why am I always breaking up? Why is this one like that with me? Why can't? Why am I always rejected? Why this? Why that? Why the other? Now it's because of perhaps soul ties. But once the soul ties are broken, the life completely changes around. Everything will be new and different, and you'll feel it in your spiritual 
walk with the Lord. Are you always struggling to keep a relationship because there is jealousy, strife, possessiveness, whatever, things that are hanging on to you, um, rejection or whatever, as the soul ties that you've had, it's, it's held you captive all the time, all these years, and perhaps you didn't know about it, but today we're going to go out here different. Does the same problem arise in your relationships? Is there anything that keeps you bound up in the soul ties? We are going to break them in Jesus' name. Why do you think that there are so many divorces, broken relationships, spiritual struggles in the Christian walk? Why do you think there are so many messed up and fragmented lives? Why can't some people never settle in a relationship? It has got to the. Uh, it's got to do with soul ties and vows made in previous relationships. Like I will always love you. I will always adore you. I will never find another like you. You are my soulmate. I can't live without you. I just want to read Proverbs um, eighteen seven. A fool's mouth is his undoing, and his lips are a snare to his soul. Be careful what you promise in a relationship. Be careful what you speak in a relationship, because that can easily be broken, and then you soul, soul tied to that person because you promised them something and you haven't come up with it. Proverbs 21:23. And you know what? We are all guilty of making the promises. We are all guilty. So we have to deal with it. Each and every one of our lives, we have to deal with it. Proverbs 21, 23. He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. And that is so true. If you open your mouth and you say the wrong things or you promise the wrong things, you're going to be held accountable to it. So just be careful when you open your mouth that it's something wholesome and godly to help somebody and not to break them down. Amen. Or promise them something and it's never come to pass. You are tied to that bond that you've made. Anything you have decreed or declared to another person in a previous relationship or a vow you have made which has tied you down will keep you in chains. Ch uh, chains. The soul ties are attached to you and will keep you in chains and will keep you tied to that person. Even the soul ties in people who have passed on. You need to release the ties. Do you, uh, do you see the urgency and the importance of dealing with this? Amen. Amen. Praise Praise so, this morning, every single one of us have got soul ties that we haven't dealt with, including myself. I thought I dealt with some of my soul ties, but they've been hanging on to me, and I've also, there's some areas in your life that you struggle with more than other things, and you have to ask yourself, why? This is what it is. It's a soul tie to something. It, it can be a soul tie to anything, but mainly it's to do with the fornication and keeping your uh, an unholy life and the one demon, wicked spirit, transferring and cross, uh, crossing over to each and every one that you've been with. And, and your evil is going into their evil, and their evil is coming into your evil uh, stuff, and now you've been way down, and all these years, it can be from something that somebody said to you, it could be abusive relationship, mainly fornication, and keeping your life unholy, when God says, 
keep holy as I am holy. He says he's holy, we must have pure, holy life before him. But now, today uh, and this morning, the Holy Spirit is going to minister to every single one of us here and we are going to break those soul ties. And we're going to go out of here feeling freed. Because I just see a vision of somebody and there's, they're standing here and all the things that they've been chained to is from here to kind of kingdom come. All these things that they've been chained to, they're just hanging on to it for dear life. But the more they pulling like this, the more they've been pulled that way. So just, just listen to the, the Holy Spirit this morning. And I don't care what it is that you've been tied to, but the Holy Spirit is going to free you this morning Amen. if you open up your heart to Him. Amen. Don't lie to the Holy Spirit. That's open right. up. If there's something in your heart, open it up so that we can pray and break the thing that's bothering you off your life in Jesus' name. There's, you know, we as Christians should be walking free and, and we should be skipping and jumping and joyful all the time. But all of us sometimes over the years, we've gathered, gathered all this junk and we're walking with, with it all the time. That's not how God wants us to live. God wants us to be free. Free, free in the name of Jesus. Yes, free in the name of Jesus. Free, free, free. And you've got to remember, you've got to want this. Yeah. You've got to be hungry for yeah. this. If you don't want it, stay where you are. And you've got to be hungry for it. You've got to need it. Want it and be hungry for it. Need it, want it, and be hungry for it. In Jesus' name. Now when Lee's been preaching, I don't know about you, but the Holy Spirit reminded me of things where I could easily have soul ties from the past yes. that I need to renounce. And apply the blood of Jesus over those areas of my life. And I'm sure if I have, you have as well. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And as the day goes on, maybe the Holy Spirit will bring to you remembrance other situations that perhaps you didn't think of now. And you deal with them exactly the same. How do you deal with the soul tie? Very simple. First, repent. In other words, have a change of mind. The way you think, which has come as a result of that soul tie, that the Holy Spirit is bringing to your memory, or you know about it already, you're already aware of it. You've got to change your mind. You've got to start thinking differently to the way you were thinking when under the control of that soul tie. And for myself, what I do is, every evil thought, every bad thought, every temptation, I replace it with a God thought. And if I can't get a God thought for some reason, then I'll just start praying in tongues until the God thought comes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now look, God's shown this to Lee, brought it to her attention. I've been aware of it. I've preached about it four or five years ago. And the one thing that we did wrong when we ministered then, I don't know if any of you were here then, but what we did was we spoke about the soul tie and when we, when we rebuked it, when we denounced it, we said, I denounce that soul tie. Uh -uh. God showed me, you must speak it out. If you don't want somebody next to you to hear, then move away from each other. But it's got nothing to do with the person next to you. But you need to say it. You need to say, I renounce pornography. I renounce adultery. I renounce fornication. I renounce drug addiction. Drug addiction and alcoholism and anger and anxiety and depression, they're all fruits of this. They're not in it themselves. Uh, um, as, as, as a soul tie. They're fruits of a soul tie. And you must remember, every time you slept with a person, you carried that soul tie with that person, and all the soul ties they made, right. you carry them around with you now. And you need to just rebuke it. I rebuke that encounter I had with, and name the person, if you know their name. 
if there's 50 of them, just know God knows who they were, and yeah. you just tell God. The other thing is, if it was somebody deceased and they've entered you, release them to the release them, release that soul time in Lord. Jesus' name. Release yeah. it. Just remember that. That I also felt that yesterday when I was uh, preach, uh, uh, preparing the word, I felt anything that's that any person that was deceased and you've had an entry into uh, an encounter or fornication or whatever it is, release it to the Lord yes, in Jesus' amen. mighty name. Release everything to God. He wants you to open up. If you don't want to do it, it's between you and God. It's got nothing to do with us. Well, if you don't want to do it, you want to continue the rest of your life and be worse under control of that soul tie. And you want to continue for the rest of your life living with the fruit, producing the fruit of that soul tie. And you'll live a life of misery forever. God wants you to be free. Anything that causes us to be in bondage is contrary to God's will. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's sex, whatever it is. If it's not a God, the only, there are good soul ties. Let me tell you, there's good soul ties. But the good soul ties are God's soul ties. Yes. A soul tie in a godly marriage a is a good soul tie. A, soul tie. a soul tie to God Himself is a good soul tie. A soul tie to the Word of God is a good soul tie. But you've got to deal with these things. Let me tell you, he did mention, but I'm sure it's in her notes. Heavy metal is bad. When it comes to soul ties, especially the ones that have got the backtracking. Oh. I heard yesterday when I was down in Green Valley, a guy went past me in a back, he had the radio up loud, and some of the stuff that was coming out from this guy's mouth was terrible. The words, I could hear the words, and that guy was enjoying it, and I just thought to myself, he's ruining his life without even realizing it. And that's how the devil is. The devil's a deceiver, and he wants to deceive you into all lies. God wants to take you into all truth. The devil wants to take you into all lies and deception. God wants to take you into all truth and freedom. In Jesus' name, the devil wants to do to you everything opposite to what God wants to do for you. If you don't understand why God's plan for your life isn't materializing, it's because you're messing with the devil too much. You're dancing with him. You're still going back to some of the old stuff. You need to break it off. Break it off and break it off. And you need to renounce, denounce and renounce and deny uh, the right of any soul tie into your life. Soul ties open doors into your life, into your heart, into your, into your inner man to control you. And that's what the devil wants. And that, that, that Lee was ill this morning when she got up this morning. She was attacked because she was preaching this. And the devil doesn't want you to hear it at all. And the other week when I was preaching, what was I preaching about? And I also got attacked. The devil doesn't want you to hear it. He hates it. If the devil doesn't want you to hear it, you need to act on it. And also the other thing is, please, we've got to be truthful with ourselves. We've got to be truthful with people. We can't be lying one lie on top of the other over and over. The lies and the lies and the lies and the lies. And people are believing the lies. Come open your heart and speak the truth. Don't lie any longer because God hates liars. But the devil will keep you in bondage with those lies, one lie on top of the other. And the innocent person believes all the lies. Stop the lies. God does hate liars. He will forgive you, but we must repent from the lies. God doesn't want liars. He wants truthful people. So repent from those things and live a clean, holy life. Stop the fornication and stop the yeah. lies, right. one after the other, after the other. Stop I just want to give you two stop. examples now of people that used to come to our church and they don't come anymore. The one was a mother, her daughter was a drug addict. The drug addict daughter kept promising the mother that she was off the drugs, she left the drugs alone. Then she started coming home with stories like, I've had money stolen out of my bag, yeah. can you help me? Yes. And the mother started to see through it because the stories became too frequent. Yeah. And she started to see through it and she yeah. used to deny it. Then the daughter started to steal to her mother. Oh. The daughter became almost suicidal because of how, what she was doing to her mother. Yeah. And this is what the devil would do through strongholds. Another instance is this. 
there was a family who used to come to us, and the one day the guy came and he asked me for some counsel, and I went to spend time with him. And he used to, he was a travelling rep, yeah. and he was always away, Durban, yeah. Cape Town, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And he had a, this bondage of prostitutes. Yeah. He'd go away and he'd sleep with prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And things were going wrong at home between him and his wife. And he said, I'm treating her like a queen. I don't understand why things are going wrong. And the fact is this, he was becoming spiritually messed up because of the soul ties. He was, he was allowed to form in his life as a result of relationships with these prostitutes. You see, some people think that it's a one night stand, that it's a fling and it's over with. One, some people think I can tell a lie and get over it and never tell another lie. But it leaves an effect. Spiritually, it has an effect. And it has an effect on your life. It has an effect on my life. I try my best never to lie. But I'm at the stage now where I don't lie, but sometimes I catch myself out exaggerating. Preachers do that sometimes. Exaggerating. And an exaggeration is just as bad as a lie. And we have to deal with these things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you want to do this quietly, it's up to you. You can come to the front, to the altar, you can get on your knees, you can sit at the front, you can do what you want, and you can just tell God, I renounce that relationship I had with, as Lee said, Tom, Dick and Harry, or I can't remember the ladies' names. Yeah, and you can denounce those things. I denounce what I've been doing as a result of this soul tie, heavy metal coming into my life. And you need to just tell God, hey, eh? it is tough, it is tough, but you've got to do it. You've got to do it. In Jesus' name. All the back pain and all that comes from stuff like that. In Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, nobody's excluded here. That's right. We all got a soul tie we're carrying forth from, from our forefathers, <laughs> our father, our mother, our grandparents, ancestors. It's a hereditary thing. We all have got different soul ties that we need to get rid of in Jesus' name. And what I would suggest is that you all come to the front and you all pray quietly to the Lord and you renounce and denounce those things that you know you're carrying from these soul ties from the past in Jesus' name. And then we'll just take it further as the Spirit leads us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, if you can only see the love of the Lord, if you can only see how much God loves every single one of you, and we love you, and it hurts us to see people hurting, because we, we want to see them free and, 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 and on fire and, and, and having a good relationship with the Lord. We want, we want to see you blessed beyond your wildest dreams. We want to see that in your lives. It hurts us to see people are struggling like that. We want to see everybody, including ourselves, we want to see ourselves free. That we can move on with what God wants us to uh, move on to. And not in this big thing that's pulling us down, chained together with all these hohos. God doesn't want that. He wants us all free this morning. And today, when we go out of this place, we're going to be set free completely and restored and renewed. And we will never return to the vomit that the devil has, uh, that we've brought up. We will never return to that vomit ever again. Because if we return to it, that's the end of the story. We've got to decide in our hearts now, it's a thing of the past, not another soul time. It doesn't matter what it is. Not another soul time. We cut it off, we slice it, we destroy it with the blood of Jesus. It will never attach itself to you unless you open the door and want it back in your life. It's between you and God and the, the devil will take full opportunity to bring you down to hell and we do not want that. We want you set free, joyful in the name of Jesus. That's what we want you. Uh, that's what our heart is for you people. To be blessed beyond measure. We want to see God bless you big time and give you the desires of Amen. your heart. But if we are asking for things now and we didn't receive it, if we all, or if we got it now, we'd mess the whole thing up over right. again. That's so right. we have to wait and be patient with the yes. Lord. 
Are we ready for the things that we've asked him yes, when okay. our lives are chained to all this ho ho stuff? Yes. Okay, I want to lead you in a prayer. Yes, Lord. And then I want you just to sit there and to meditate on what you're doing. And as the Spirit of God reminds you of things or you know other things that you need to renounce, you can quietly do it there. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we just turn it down? You know, through this, through this thing, renouncing things, relationships will be healed and restored in Jesus' name. Every broken relationship that was uh, broken up through evil things or evil soul ties, uh, and loved ones in your life, when those soul ties are broken and destroyed, those people will see and they'll come back. They'll come back to you and, and your hearts will be joined together and healed. And there will never be a separation because you've dealt with all those soul ties in your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. So just say this. <clears throat> say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You are my God. You are my God. And I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. And I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. And I come to you this morning. I come to you this morning. Humbly. Humbly, with a repentant heart, with a repentant heart, a change of mind, a change of mind. I need to be set free. I need to be set free. Your word promises. Your word promises. Through the sun sets free. Through the sun sets free. Is free indeed. Free indeed. And I need that freedom. I need that freedom. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And so, Lord, I come to you. And so, Lord, I come to you. And I renounce, I renounce every, single every single soul tie in my life. As I mention them to you, Lord, later on, as I sit here at the altar, I thank you, Lord, that we cut off one after the other, and I will be set free in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. Apply the blood of Jesus over my life. In Jesus' name. Now say this and say it with boldness and say it with all authority. Say, Satan. I come against you with the blood of Jesus. I renounce you. I renounce your wicked ways. In my life. I cut off all those soul ties I've been enticed into in the past. I break off every sexual union. Every sexual relationship. I break off every hereditary curse. Every hereditary curse that has got a stronghold on my life. Over my life. They, will no longer they will no longer influence me. Influence me. I break off I break every, bad every bad relationship with anybody I've worked with, with, anybody I've worked with, with, with any of my family, with any of my family, anybody I've grown up with. with anybody I've grown up Holy, with. Spirit, Holy Spirit, remind me remind of soul ties of soul that have attached themselves that have to attached me themselves that I'm not fully aware of at this moment. I want to renounce them. I want, I want to be free from them. I want to, I want to cast them off. I want to, I want to break them off. I want to break in them Jesus off. Name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Now you just sit there. In and you Jesus just name. spend time in the presence of the Lord. And as you think of those soul ties, because the Holy Spirit's going to remind you of them if you're not being reminded already. And you just say, Lord, I renounce that pornography. Lord, I renounce that sexual encounter with Henry or whoever it was. Or with Jill, whoever it was. If it was a bad relationship of the past, I renounce that relationship. I cast it and I break it off in Jesus' name. If you've ever stolen, you break it off. You renounce it. You, I renounce that time. I stole that. And I break it off in Jesus' name. I, the blood of Jesus cleanses me. That's how you must talk. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you for your greatness. We worship you for your greatness. Oh, we praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Any ministry, any freedom that God brings to your life, that God brings to your life, has to come through faith. And you put an ingredient of faith is expectation. You've got to expect now to be free. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is going to continue working in your lives over the next few days. He's going to remind you of these soul ties. 
He's going to remind you of the soul ties you need to renounce and you need to let go of in Jesus' name. You have been set free, you were healed, and you were restored the moment Jesus went to the cross and he shed his blood for you. And we're going to have communion now. And, uh, and, and you were healed from all this at that time. The problem is that the devil is a liar and he's a deceiver. And he continues to try and penetrate us with lies and deceit. But the word of God says you can do all things through Christ Jesus. You can do all these things through Christ Jesus. You can be set free from any addictions. You can be set free. And I'm not just talking about drugs, I'm talking about heavy metal, I'm talking about lies, I'm talking about lustful thoughts, all these things. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, God wants you to be free this morning. God wants you to be free this morning. You expect to be free. You do your part, you do it in faith, and God blesses you for that. In Jesus' name. It's the cross. It's the cross of Jesus. This sets us free of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So as we eat of the bread, we are reminded of the price that was paid for our deliverance. We are reminded of the price that was paid for our salvation. We are reminded how much we each matter to God. I've got it here. The devil is a liar. He wants you to think that you don't matter to God. That you don't care. God doesn't care about you. But God cares about you more than anything else. And this is in the whole of his creation. He cares about you. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Some of you, he's got you so bound up that you're going to be finished. That you're going to die. That you can't handle life anymore. He's got you bound up. In all his lies. And then they come as a result of different soul ties. Well, if you're in this church, we're going to get you into a soul tie with Jesus. Hallelujah. And you're going to walk in freedom in Jesus' name. Whether it takes years and years, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep on pumping you and pumping you and pumping you until you're free. The sad thing is, for myself, when I think about it, I could have been freed so many years ago. So as we take this bread together, we just remember that by his stripes we've been healed, our minds healed, our bodies healed. In Jesus' name. I want you all to put your other hand on your head and to confess, my mind is healed. My mind is healed. Because that's a playground of the devil. That's a place he hits first of all. Your mind is healed. You see, without a healthy soul, it's impossible to walk in divine health and to prosper. The soul has to be healthy. So let's just eat together. We thank you, Lord. Jesus said, when we drink up of this cup of his blood, we do it in remembrance of the fact his blood was shed for us, and we are saved. And as we drink this, we apply the blood of Jesus to our minds, to our lives, to our families, because the life of Jesus is in his blood. And we thank you for it, Lord. And devil, I want to remind you right now that the blood of Jesus is against you. And we are washed. I am washed. Say, I am washed. I am washed. In the blood of in Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Then there's power. In the blood of Jesus. Power to deliver. Power to set free. And the blood of Jesus sets me free. In Jesus' name. Let's drink together. Amen. And amen. Come and do your normal food stuff. In Jesus' name. You've got to maintain this. You've got to maintain this. You've got to maintain this. You've got to keep on confessing that you're free. And every time you think about it, rebuke. Not the thoughts, because it can be the Holy Spirit bringing it to your memory. But rebuke the time. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Rebuke the lie that's in it. Rebuke the devil for messing with you. In Jesus' name. Father, we bring 
Bianca, we bring the Murrays before you, we bring the Stanfields, Karaskis, the Amoses, the uh, Ashfords before you, we bring Sabola, Tapella before you, we bring Lloyd, uh, Prince Lou before you, we bring Anel before you, Lord. Father, for those people that have promised to be here this morning, Father, that didn't even come up, Father God. Father, we bring them all before you, Father. We just thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit works in their hearts. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for healing, restoration, divine alignment, divine intervention, supernatural wealth for to a supernatural death cancellation. We thank you, Lord, for miracle signs and wonders. Father, we bring Brigitte before you, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that we... We, we uh, destroy, we ca cancel that assignment of the enemy against her right now. We command that cancer to die in her body right now. It will not spread in any way, form or shape in Jesus' name. Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We all have peace in our heart, Father God. Yes, amen. That you daily load us with your benefits. That amen. you are our shepherd. We shall not lack, Lord. That yes. you put your angels around Lord, us and turn around our homes, our cars, and our and the highways and byways. We thank you for our new jobs, our new homes, debt-free homes, our new cars, our holidays, our full church, our full-time ministry, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that we are protected with the blood of Jesus over our lives and our families' lives right now in yes. Jesus' name. Yes, I believe the Lord is saying, fight this with all your might. And I'm with you, I'm alongside you, I will fight the fight. But I need your approval, I need your cooperation. I need you to push those things out of the way and I will remove them, says the Lord. But you must maintain. You must be determined. You must be de determined not to go back to any of those things that so easily ensnared you and entrapped you. In Jesus' name. 